You just wallow 267, man. Million dollars worth of game bar stew podcast, man. I'm right here with the one and only the legend, Don C. Wallow, listen, man. What's up, listen, you got Philly, you got Chicago. We're gonna get straight to the point because we're gonna talk about some shit that a lot of people don't sometimes they don't talk about. Who you picking? Uh cross color, car canal, major damage. Mm -hmm. Carl Canal. All day. You you just you gonna go right in like that? I'll go Carl Canal because uh man, I just respect. I, I still see Carl work. So that's why I gotta give it to him. But 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 was you love back then though? Yeah, yeah, back then. Oh back Chicago was a little different. Um I didn't really do none of them heavy because I thought I was on some real fashion stuff even back then. What was you fucking with then? Uh like Gucci in like eighth grade. Oh, you was a bad motherfucker. Like not really because I was broke. So I had to ask my grandmother, like, grandma, because my parents forget about it. Like, yeah. but I go to my grandmother and be like, hey grandma, I want this Gucci bag. And I remember she was like, okay, get, do this. And, and it was like something like she just wanted me to, like, for eighth grade graduation, she got me the Gucci bag. So then it just introduced me to, like, oh, okay, I'm you on was another on some, level. You yeah. was on some shit. Yeah, another level. What year yeah. was this about? Uh, 1990. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. The Chronic ain't even come out yet. You was rocking Gucci? I mean, just a bag. <laughs> they had, they but then had... I had, like, the effect. Oh, no, I'll tell you real. I had the loafers, too, the year after that. And I, 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 I really, really remember this because... I remember I stepped on my block with some Ferragamo loafers, but this may be later than this, probably five years later, like 95. And I had on some Ferragamo loafers, and I lived in the hood. I'm from 79th and yeah. uh, South Side of Chicago. So people don't, to this day, ain't no other Ferragamo loafers been on my block. Yeah. But these from yeah, 95. Yeah. And so I remember I had on some Ferragamo loafers, and one of my homies was like, bro, I only heard Nas rap about that. And he was like, how you think of that? And I was like, man, I just heard somebody rap about it. Oh, but, oh, oh one minute, stop. Before we even get any further, before we still, I, I didn't properly introduce you. So the audience, and just in case if the audience don't know who you is, tell them your origins. Tell them who you. Tell them who you affiliated with. Tell them who you who you played the part in. Tell them all that. Tell these people out here that shit, please, Don. Man, I'm Don C from Chicago. Uh, I'm just a creative that makes products i know people know maybe my brand because we're here at nba all-star weekend i do stuff with uh basketball companies the nba uh shoe brands uh tell them some of the brands tell, tell them some of your sneakers tell, uh, tell nike converse and jordan um and yeah i'm just mitchell and Ness, new era you know mostly sneakers and sports because that's what i'm really into but I'm also in the fashion, but I'm, I don't look at myself as a fashion person because I'm primarily uh, embedded in sports. The history. bottom line is Don C is from the hood and he a producer of fly shit. If you don't know, that that, that, that could sum it all up. Oh, but you. go back to the, the, you know, go back to how you was killing them coming up, you know? Uh, man, just trying to be fresh and trying to represent. It's funny, I did a talk with my friend Ivan earlier today mm -hmm. and Ivan drew a very important point to me. He said what made us different, honestly, was we were hip hop. Mm -hmm. We were the first crew that took hip hop from Chicago. Like me and my peers, everything, Chicago's a city that's uh, cemented in house and dance culture, in gang culture. Mm -hmm. That's where you either gang banger or you a dance dude. Mm -hmm. We came in like we hip hop. And I remember originally people was dissing us. Like, oh, y'all niggas think y'all from New York. Like, and I said, yeah. no, we not New York, we Chicago. We just hip hop, mm -hmm. we're just Chicago hip hop. And so that's what I think made us special. And from hip hop came all this other stuff we're experiencing today. So hip hop is really the, the core. I think that's the dominating factor that makes the things that move today move is it's all hip-hop when you say hip-hop because it's, it's a mix it ain't hip-hop music it's the culture of yeah, hip -hop, yeah yeah the lifestyle of hip-hop like I, it, yeah. yeah i mean you know dj the, and not just rap music it's not hip-hop it's mm -hmm. like yo hey, you, graffiti artists. exactly yes. the hip-hop music going to hip-hop clubs so we was like the first ones to do hip-hop parties in chicago like before us it was just house and people from the house community they thought we was dick weird, but we thought they was weird, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause it was like, we not, we didn't identify with house music like that. But in the ghetto, everything that's not, what the majority is doing is it's some weird, weird shit. Exactly. So you could be doing the dopest shit in the yeah. world, but that's when you know you really doing some dope shit in the ghetto when everybody laughing at you and talking I, about you crazy. I, I got teased and I got called names for being in the fashion. Now these same guys are begging me for drops like oh man bro this come out this day and i said oh i thought i was 
weird. I, weird uh, I yeah. thought I was, you know, but it's all good. I'm happy that more people jumped on and the community is bigger. Mm -hmm. Cause now it just makes it funner. You know, if more people participate, more people delivering doper product, more people encouraging each other to make their stuff better. So it just makes the whole game better when everybody's participating. All right, which one are you picking? You only could pick one. You gotta rock these for the rest of your life. That would never. Charles, listen, I'm listening. You got to You got to You got to pick one. Just one of this. This scenario would never happen. Listen, 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 the Charles Barkley's, the uh, okay. CB2 Jones, uh, the Deion Sanders with the flames on there. Okay. Or the pennies, the number twos. I'm gonna go to Barclays because I'm a forced basketball head, so uh, the, the Barclays is one. Is All one. right, I'll go with those. You, you only can listen to one of these groups for the rest of your life. Uh oh, Wu Tang. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. And, and I'm taking them out of there. I was gonna take them. NWA, Public Enemy, okay. Brand Nubian, Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul. Tribe. Oh, I I'll you answer it because you did try. It was either Wu Tang and Tribe, so you said Wu Tang and it, so Tribe. You ain't gotta finish. Cause for me, it's for me as Wu Tribe, Capone and Noriega. They're like my favorite hip hop group. What about my beat? I was gonna oh, say uh, Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. You got me messed up on that one. I'm tripping, man. I kind of forgot about my deep. I'm tripping. I was gonna say Ultra Magnetic. Okay, all right. So hold on. I, now I, I love Ultra Magnetic, but for the consistency of the whole body of work, I'm gonna go Wu Tribe, Mob Deep, CNN. What happened to Public Enemy? I, I ain't that old. So they didn't, like, I'm just being real. Like, yeah. it, the 90s is my era. So Public Enemy, you respected them as like OGs, but you didn't want to be around them. Like, I don't want to be scolded all day, Chuck. You think Chuck, Chuck going like, to be preaching to you all well, day? Well, now not. But back then, that's what I thought. You think he'd be like, yo, man, what you doing, man? Yeah, because I was on some young yeah. guy stuff. So you got to let people do what they do. And, and mature on their level. So, you know, even when I look at guys today, when people say like, oh, this dude did this, the whole thing with people canceling people is the worst thing in the world. Because when people make mistakes, we supposed to be there for them. So to cancel a person, so anytime people do stuff that looks in the public like it's messed up, I'll be having empathy for that person. Cause I'll be like, man, this person, they like me. They just made a mess, they, they just messed up. And they don't want people to like cancel them for messing up. That's the point when you really need your people. So anytime people go in the down, I'm there to encourage you, bro. I don't want people like out here, even if you mess up and you you could do whatever the most messed up thing in the world, own up to it and come on back, man. That's what it's all about. Redemption is one of the best things ever. Yes. So if we cancel people, we never allow nobody to redeem themselves. I respect I respect Don for that. You know, they know my story. You probably don't know my story, Don, but I when, I was, when I was 17, I got sentenced to 19 and a half to 52 years. I did 20 years in prison. Went to prison at 17, came out 37. Been home for 36 months, which would be three years, February 18th, which is in a couple days. Damn, they, bro. They, they made extraordinary shit happen. Took the cell phone, uh, and, and I realized that you know technology changed my life. I was came home, living in my uh, my grandma's middle room on the twin size bed, the same size as the one I was in the joint. And I just I just went to Instagram every day. I told you know told the hood about my story, and I told the hood that it costs too much to be a criminal. I also told the hood to be you. You see what I'm saying? Because I went to the penitentiary because I was married to the streets of Philadelphia because I learned that growing up in the ghetto. Attention is God, and the only way you get attention is through through money, through jewelry, through clothes. So I had to go get that shit. You see what I'm saying? And in the process of me going to get that shit, I got caught up. But I, that was some real shit that you said. You know, a lot of people would just say, oh, it's over for you because it is. As long over, as you're breathing, nobody, you got a shot. Yeah, bro. You got a shot. If you're breathing, you could be the best person on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. We all got the same opportunities. And that's why a lot of people that come from my hood, and they be like, yo, Don, see this. I, I tell people, I say, man, bro, me and you, we are absolutely no different. We come from the same block. We have the same opportunity. I have never been given any opportunity you haven't been given. Yeah. We can say, it's just that I'm working every day. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage you to do the same. That's what I tell my homies from the neighborhood. I like, they'll hit me when it's a party, but they won't hit me. Ain't none of my boys from the neighborhood here. But if this was the party tonight, they will all be right here. Mm -hmm. I kind of be encouraging them like, bro, y'all got to show up for work sometimes because there's probably opportunities in this setting that's way you going yeah, yeah, you know, to in the yeah. club tonight. Now, let me ask you, I need you to do me a favor. Being as though, you know, million dollars worth of game, this is what it is. Uh, I need you to get some game 
to that cat out there, to that girl out there that's going to get their shit silk screen, that, that, that's trying to sell it, but everybody ain't buying their shit all the time. After their family bought their shit, it slowed down, they want to give up. They don't understand design. They don't understand what what what, what type of encouragement, what type of game that you can get them to keep pushing their shit. Do they need to try to find a collab or do 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 you know because we control cool. You know I mean, one thing about it, we control cool. So do they need to get with somebody else to to make them the shit? Like, give me some game. Get that person that's watching this some game that's making their shit. Um, the encouragement I could give that person is like, keep absolutely keep doing what you're doing. Keep tweaking. The formula, when you're making something, if it's a little too sweet, if it's a little too bitter, you tweak the formula a little bit. So you keep testing your product and then tweaking the formula and keep doing that. And a guy came to me earlier today. He said, man, boy, I got my own clothing line. Can you give me some encouragement on how to push it? I said, is this jacket your clothing line? He said, oh, no, this is off-white. I said, that's my first piece of encouragement. You billboard and something else, <laughs> you know. I just gotta keep it real. I like right now. I could be checking your thing out, mm -hmm. but I'm looking at this off white hoodie I already seen before, you know. Yeah. And so that was my yeah. piece of encouragement. This now, right here, hold. Let me plug this. Wait, say this. <laughs> Paper brown bag. This is my homeboy out of Philly shit, right? You see this? This all. This my. This my brand. Oh, we control cool. This my logo. Street shark. You see the back. He's the shit. He's from Philly. I He's love making that. it happen. Check all, all, all his shit. This is my hat. This is my logo. This is my brand made. I was worth a game shit trademarked. All that. You know what I mean? That's what it's about too. That so how important so is trademark? Put uh, that's your IP. Like in the world we live oh, in. Tell them what IP is so they can understand. Your what intellectual IP. Property. property. That's your real estate from a design perspective. So that's a real big one. Like I be seeing some of my young guys, they do incredible work and then they realize like, oh bro, I got a cease and desist. Or mm, yeah. hey bro, I, uh, man, I ain't even know uh, this other company took this from me. So that's one thing really important. You gotta be on top of your business too. That's why research is so important. Like we can educate ourselves on our phone. Google, we Google. Can we can it, like literally on your phone instead of, um posting selfies and all that, you could be doing research, fam. Like, looking on your phone, educating yourself about what you want to do, educating yourself about the business, because that's another thing I'm about to start, like, really switching up how I want to uh, just try to help people with information. Like, people always come to me like, I want to get my brand, I want to get my design out. And what we lacking is uh, financial brands. We're lacking uh, executives in our community. Everybody is creative. And so I just want to put a call out. We need some non-creatives or some people that can flex their creative ability through uh, As you keep. Uh, yeah. Like be creative with that spreadsheet or with that <laughs> yeah. deck or with your Trademark. man and all type of business. And so that's the one thing because I do feel like as much as I'm so happy that our community is like growing and we doing it. If I was, a, I'm one of them type of shorties. I used to be looking back and like people would be applauding all the NBA players. And I would be looking back like, man, NBA players make 200 million a year. Man, why they don't own the NBA then? You know, I'm just that's, the type of kid. I'll be shit. thinking yeah. something else. That's like, right. man. And so that's how I think about us. When I look at us, I say, man, y'all killing it, but why y'all don't own everything? Why y'all, why yeah, other? Yeah. So, that's the importance I want to put out there now. Like, as much as I appreciate the big corporations coming in to lay this platform for us here, we got to partner with the corporations. We got to make them our partner and not just give them our IP. Yeah. Because if they giving you a check for your IP, that means your IP worth more than that. Because this is a smart business entity. They about doubling and tripling their paper. So they not gonna hit you with nothing yeah. that they just gonna get their paper back on. Yeah. Whatever they hit you with, mean they 10 time in that. Yeah. So we gotta think like that and tell them we thinking like that. Mm -hmm. Like be open. And so that's that's the script I have with the people that I work with. I tell them like, hey, this is on my brain now. So one of the main things I can personally say what I'm into is like, I'm, I'm trying to learn more about real estate because it's a lane that I haven't. We always talk uh, culture and and, and uh, creativity, yeah. but part of culture is money. Bunch we money. gotta learn it, man. We gotta learn how to manage the money. We gotta learn how to grow the money and let the money stay in our community and build, and make the community bigger because it's all about uh, the, the super jewel I feel I should drop here because somebody dropped this one on me today and I wanna share it. Yeah, is that 
The number one asset we have in our community is our culture. We have to figure out how to monetize our culture more. Other people from outside of this community are the ones that are eating off this culture that we have created, cultivated, and flourished. Other people are eating off of it. Now, the only reason they haven't stolen it from us is because we evolve it all the time. As soon as I come up with a word, if you want to try to take my word and make some money on it, I'm going to flip and bounce and come with a new word. So you can't steal the culture from me, but you can get paid off of it. And we have to figure out how we getting paid off of it. But we never have to worry about it getting stolen. But what about the cats that is, that is us from the culture that get in position and they don't do shit? Like, like you saying we got to try to come up. It's always going to be happening. We have to help encourage those people because they're in a good position. So don't, like I said earlier, don't cancel them. I ain't canceling them. I'm bring not canceling them. In. I'm just Say, saying. Say, man, bro, how I feel about you is you from this and you in a position to help. Can you do so? Can we have that open dialogue? Because you might not know their point of view too. They mm -hmm. might not be in a position to help like you think they are. You know, they might just be cat. Yeah. So it's all. And at the end of the day, we all. The common goal is that we're all working to feed our families. Yeah. So I ain't never trying to make nobody feel bad on what they doing yeah. to put food on their family table. Because I will wash a toilet bowl. And proudfully, I work in Yeah, I, I, I ain't, ain't trained by mine. Cause if I'm, if my family gotta eat, I'ma do it. Mm -hmm. So we got off the key, I guess, with this. But I wanna, I, I think it's important. It's important. It's, it's necessary. It's not that just you get a game that you just basketball. Gave up. It's everything. Yeah, it's everything. everything. Everything is encompassing. Yeah, and that's what I came for. But listen, I appreciate hey, man, you, man. I like your spirit a listen, lot, man. man. I like to uh, build with you, man. We gonna do I that, bro. It. We gonna connect, man. Down C, Chicago, Philadelphia, man. This shit, we control cool. Remember that. Million dollars worth of game bar soon is just like that. All day. See y'all.